What's up, guys? While we're on this subject of a little bit more philosophical look at watch collecting and really collecting in general, I wanted to take us back a step and talk about what is the morality of any of this? What do we get out of collecting? What's the point of collecting stuff at all? So for those of you who have been following my podcast for a while, you may remember an episode that I did around this uh, a long time ago, but I don't think that episode is available anymore, and I think it's very important that we rehash this. Plus, you know, I'm always thinking about these uh, ideas and have uh, more thoughts to share. So let's just dig right into it. Those of you who follow me and my inventory and my channel know that I focus on really very insanely expensive watches. Uh, I have a Grobel 4C on my wrist, as I often do, and this is, you know, the tip, 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 tip top of stuff. And uh, a reasonable person could suggest that this is unjustifiable, that there are people in the world with needs that are not getting met, and uh, the uh, marginal money spent on things like this could go a long way to help people. Um, and this is definitely true. And so I think that we would be remiss if we dismissed these people offhand and didn't think about this question a little bit. Um, however, I do think that luxury is morally justified in, uh, in several ways, and so I wanna, I wanna dig into that. Now, a man much smarter than I uh, named David Hume, who's a 19th century philosopher, he wrote a brilliant essay called Of Refinement in the Arts, which uh, I'll link to down in the YouTube links. And if you're interested in this sort of stuff, you may wanna uh, read it, but the, in it, he coins the phrases vicious luxury versus innocent luxury. And the distinction that he makes is that vicious luxury is the luxury that comes at the exclusion of something else. So um, people who are not uh, providing both financially and with uh, sort of compassion and, and all of these things for maybe their family, their communities, um, not putting enough money aside uh, for uh, living, uh, not contributing to charity, all of these things, he coins that as vicious luxury. And I think that that's a really nice distinction to make. I also uh, believe charity is very important, both in, uh, well, in money, in time, in spirit, uh, all of these things. Uh, it's important to our society to be contributive members of the society. Uh, however, I do think that there is a, uh, a justification and a reason and a benefit for once we have met uh, whatever to us and to our society is deemed reasonable in that way um, to indulge in some of these more uh, luxurious uh, vice-like pleasures. There's always going to be a certain amount of need in the world, and we can do our best to help that need. Uh, but need is not only uh, a one-sided thing. We don't only need food. We don't only need shelter. We also need beauty. We need art. We need ingenuity. And the only way we get those things is if we support them. So yes, some part of our effort and energy and resources need to be committed to uh, these kind of basic, what we think of as basic human needs, survival basically. Um, but cultures that have been at bare survival are not traditionally uh, what we would like to think of as good cultures. You're looking at barbarianism, basically. And the most civilized cultures have had very high levels of arts in them. And I think that this is actually a basic human, uh, now big human, need is to support and be engaged in some form of this. And this is where, for those of us who have the watch bug, this can really come into play. Now, uh, if you look at a watch like, uh, like a Grobel 4 you're talking about uh, a company with a hundred employees, right? Uh, some of the most skilled artisan and craftsmen in the world. And they get their employment by 
our support of this craft. Now the Swiss watch industry has thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of more people and they are all supported by this. The entire Savoir Faire, the know-how of watchmaking, the tradition that goes through centuries, this is all supported every time we buy a watch. Now our responsibility in this is to be careful of what we support along the way because this shapes the direction of these things and I think that um, some types again vicious luxury versus uh, innocent luxury you can promote things unknowingly that are not uh, necessarily ideal so what's a what's a good example of this um, if you take a let's say a, a, an independent watchmaker because that's the, the kind of easiest thing to think of is just a brilliant guy uh, toiling away to make something great, right? So you take, uh, I have a very early Kari Voodalainen piece with tons and tons and tons and tons of handwork. He worked 10 years on this watch and it's, it's ingenious and it's beautiful and it, it is a man's strive for perfection. And so uh, when you buy a piece like that or even uh, like a piece like that, even if you're just sending um, kind of your support out into the world for that sort of a thing, um, what you're supporting is uh, man's quest for perfection, somebody's entire lifetime of study, um, getting through hard challenges, all of these things, uh, and also leading towards him being able to create a brand where he gets to make these things and continue his craft and make a lot of other people happy uh, in the process. I think this is a really actually virtuous thing and it ends up being better for society as a whole when things like that exist. Um, on the flip side of that, let's take, uh, I don't even, a specific name doesn't come to mind, but let's take some sort of more charlatan type of person who is just uh, kind of building a company uh, to uh, ride on the coattails of the fact that certain types of watches are hot or colors or this and that, um, making a case out of a cool material, mass producing it uh, in some way, or even, um, you know, smaller production, but, but no real like heart and soul to it, uh, selling it at a very high price because the market will bear it and because, you know, most people don't really know the difference between the good stuff and the bad stuff. Um, that ends up being quite a bit less defensible in my mind and is actually taking uh, resources away from things that are really good and really helpful and really great in the world. And so uh, this is uh, kind of the main passion uh, of, of my YouTube channel, in fact, is if people are going to participate in this activity, which I think is really beneficial to them, I want them to be able to do it uh, knowingly so that, uh, so that we're promoting the good and bringing about more of it rather than promoting uh, the not so good and in that way, maybe unjustifiably uh, wasting resources. I think the next justifiable reason uh, why buying a really good luxury watch is uh, is kind of beneficial is you can actually achieve uh, and, and gain real inspiration from this. I've learned actual values that I apply in my life, my business, my family from watches. Um, so for example, if you look at a perfectly executed and polished uh, bridge that you just know was uh, years and years and years of training to get to the point where somebody could make something like that and then precise execution uh, to pull it off properly plus bringing in uh, hundreds of years of aesthetic uh, ideas to make it so beautiful and so amazing then I think you can take those values out of the object once you know how to fully appreciate them. So there are times that uh, maybe I wanna take a little bit of a shortcut in my job or uh, with my family or making dinner or who knows what. But when you're around such uh, amazing beauty and craft and really the true spirit of humanity, 
it, it infuses into you to some extent. And so you end up actually doing a better job in everything that you are doing. And that ultimately is not only better for you and your family, but also your community and your state and your country and the world. So when we focus on these incredibly virtuous human qualities, we end up getting more human. And in that way, I think it leads to, to really a, a better world in solving some big problems. This is really heady stuff, I know, but I think it begs, uh, you know, answering when we're talking about uh, buying six-figure types of watches here. The next important point I want to talk about is actual personal enhancement in the quest for knowledge and the learning about whatever it is that our hobby is, in this case, watches. Now, uh, in order to even get to this point, you know, anybody who's watching this video has to have a very high level of interest. And I think we don't want to discount how important the quantity of interest in the world is. Um, not everybody's interested. And when you start losing interest, you become a much less, uh, active person in the world. Um, so interest kind of begets more interest. How many of you have had the experience where um, maybe you got into some, some other thing? Maybe it was food or it was wine or it was pens or it was cars or something like that. And that's what actually got you into watches and got you here in the first place. Or maybe watches was a jumping off point and you realized, uh, oh, well, well, I like this about watches. Maybe I like this about architecture or this about art or this about cars. Um, each thing is a stepping stone to another and you're building knowledge as you go. This is important personally, but it also creates a societal fabric because in order to learn, you're constantly then seeking out other people with similar interests and knowledge that you can gain from and jumping from here to there, bringing this idea of quality, whatever it may be, from one pursuit to the next. So not only do you get much more interested, uh, but you also become much more interesting. And when everybody's more interested and more interesting, the kind of general level of humanity and community and, and all of these things that ultimately lead to a better functioning planet, um, they, they occur on their own and they go up and they are, they're actually important things to a, a, a beautiful society that we all want to live in. Um, so this is, uh, this is a really important point not to be missed that, uh, the more you can share these things, the more you can seek out, the more you can try to learn and take what you've learned to other facets, the more you're multiplying the virtuous parts of this pursuit. Now this all leads to a really big conclusion, and that is that the overall amount of meaning derived from this, the justifiability of all of this, is in kind of direct proportion to the purposefulness of your own journey in this. And this is really, the heart of the reason that I'm making these videos. The more you think about why it is that you want to be into watches at all, and then what it is that makes a good watch, what are the things that are important to you, you know, the more mindful you stay along this entire part of the journey, the actually more virtuous it is. The flip side of that being, if you just uh, are kind of buying willy nilly just to, uh, you know, show off to your neighbor or something like that, it ends up being uh, fairly meaningless, maybe not, maybe not vicious luxury, uh, but at the very least meaningless luxury. Um, if you can pour some actual purpose and thought and consideration into this, you're going to get a lot more out of it uh, personally. And that's ultimately what is most important. Uh, to me. I think that uh, I have my own taste, I have my own things that are uh, very important to me in this industry, and I think that a large majority of people, the more purposeful they are, will agree with me. Um, 
you know, I think my reasoning is pretty sound. But it's less important that you do agree with me as to what's good than that you actually really think through it and come up with your own ideas of what's good, what's justifiable, what it is that you want to support, uh, why you're in this area. Now, this really doesn't apply to the guy who wants uh, just, you know, a cool looking watch. In that case, great get a cool looking watch. That's totally fine. This is not what I'm talking about at all. But for those of us who are deep into this and putting forth incredible resources of uh, time and money and um, care and all of these things, then I, I urge you to look at these questions, examine them, answer them for yourself, uh, don't just answer them once, continually have this dialogue as you are uh, looking at watches, progressing through them, buying them, selling them, talking about them, um, or uh, you know when you go to a really nice restaurant uh, this weekend or uh, tomorrow's Valentine's Day, so maybe for that. Uh, in, in all of these areas, you can bring this mindfulness to uh, luxury and I think uh, it'll end up being a much more virtuous space. So I hope this wasn't a, too heady and kind of pretentious a topic. I really do think it's important, so I'm glad to be able to cover it. And uh, I'll be back soon uh, showing you guys just some cool watches. Thanks.